Today, we're diving in something special, something near and dear to my heart, and those are the five style principles I live by and that every woman should know. And trust me, darling, these are not just your run-of-the-mill rules. Hey, fashionistas, new here? I'm Chi Chi, welcome. Not new here, hey girl, hey. Welcome the new kids and let them know how we treat family around here. Today, we're diving in something special, something near and dear to my heart, and those are the five style principles I live by and that every woman should know. These are golden nuggets that will have you slaying every day with confidence and flair. So buckle up, buttercups, let's do this. Oh, before we get into the video, let me go ahead and share my go-to lip. I know I get questions about what I'm wearing. I am wearing the super lustrous The Gloss by Revlon. Old school OG. You know, how do they even do that? Yeah. Old school OG YouTuber and show y'all. So I'm wearing this in the color Taupe Luster. And if you have two-tone lips or you're around my complexion, this lip gloss is the bee's knees, okay? When I don't want to think about like lip liner and layers and all the things, I always throw on this gloss and it literally just always pulls together my face, my makeup. It's also super like moisturizing and soft on the lips. Ooh, I think it has like Manuka honey in it, if I recall. Oh, it was originally sent to me in PR and I'm pretty sure I bought like five tubes since then. Um, it's getting harder and harder to find. I think the last time I ordered these, I ended up getting them from either Walmart or Amazon. I can't remember, but I'm gonna link them for you down below if you're interested. I mean, it's so moisturizing and so soft on the lips. The only con with this, it does give you that white line. That's the only thing I don't like about it, but when it comes to like just wearability on your lips, just the right amount of color wash on the lip, she's that girl. Mm hmm Yes, yeah, she is. The first rule is going to be stick to a color palette. Now, I feel like this is like AP style. <laughs> Specifically, I like to stick to a seasonal color palette because I love to change things up and that gives me the flexibility if I'm feeling certain colors this season to curate um, a color palette around a specific color and in the next season I'm feeling something else I get to do that all over again. I feel like this is like the advanced part of like our style 101 series because I don't hear enough people talking about how important this step would be into helping you get dressed on the daily. This is very important and I think the reason why this isn't discussed as much is because most people tend to stick to a very neutral palette which easily mixes and matches. If you stick to your like your creams, your browns, your navies, your blacks, all most neutral colors tend to match with each other. However, if you want to have a little bit more fun with your style, you want to incorporate more colors, if you want to incorporate more prints, having a seasonal color palette will ensure that all the pieces that you're curating and adding to your wardrobe and buying mix and match together. For example, personally, the way I incorporate this into my wardrobe is by sticking to a hero color. I'm pretty sure if you've spent five seconds on social media, maybe on TikTok or on Instagram, you've seen the girls get their colors done and you've seen them like kind of figure out like what colors work for them, whether they're an autumn winter or a cool summer or whatever descriptions they've been told. For me, I kind of crowdsourced what my colors were because I noticed that when I posted myself in certain colors, people would always compliment me. I realized that actually I look great in colors because there was a time in my life where I always stuck to very safe colors, stuck to my blacks and my neutrals and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if that is you. But if you're someone who's always wanted to incorporate color into your wardrobe and wondered why you were struggling with it, it's because you didn't do the due diligence of creating a color palette. So for me, I know that oranges, pinks, mustards look great on me, certain purples look good on me, and so I'll pick a color. I think last summer, what was my color last summer? Mm. I know that there was one summer that orange was my color and so I made sure that I was picking pieces within that color family. I made sure I was adding more orange pieces to my wardrobe and buying pieces that were also complementary to 
orange pieces, right? And in one year it was like a mustard and another year it was like a pink. And so by having the seasonal color palette, when it comes time to get dressed, I know that I'll have a shoe or a bag or a top or something that I can mix and match with an outfit and to create an outfit that I love. And again, by, by matching, I don't mean like the exact same color. I mean pieces that are complementary to the colors that I'm currently loving for the season. I feel like my color this summer is going to be sort of like a lime green. I've been adding a lot of green, lime green, those kind of colors to my wardrobe. And that's kind of how it happens for me. When I start gravitating towards a certain color a lot, I'm, I make a note of it and start making sure that I'm pulling pieces from the archive, AKA clothing that I already own. Also that when I'm shopping, I'm also thinking, okay, I have this, I just bought this piece, what pairs of shoes would go with that, etc., etc. So I'm intentionally shopping within my color palette so I'm sure that everything mix and matches well. You know what? How many times do I say mix and match? <laughs> Let's move on to the next point. The next rule that I live by, and some <laughs> may feel like I'm being hypocritical, is that I do not follow trends blindly. Gone are those days. Gone are the days where I followed trends blindly, where I just bought stuff because I thought it was cute. I just bought stuff, you know, because I saw it on my favorite celebrity or um, influencer. No. I don't do that anymore. And I think the reason why I don't do that anymore is because I've come to a point in my life where I'm pretty clear about what my personal style is. Now, I wouldn't say that I have a defined personal style because I consider myself kind of like a chameleon, but I do know that the way my personal style works is very much inspired by the seasons. I know that in the summertime, I love to be a little bit more carefree, more boho, more loose, more beachy. And I know in the wintertime, I'd like to be a little bit more structured, more sophisticated, more edgy. So. I already know these things about myself. So I may not like, you know, be overly, and my whole wardrobe may not be filled with like rosettes and bows, like if you have like more of a girly style, or, you know, filled with like spiky boots and black leather if you have more of an edgy style. But I do know the kind of pieces that I naturally gravitate towards. And so, because of what I do, I have to be in the know of what's coming out in fashion, what's on trend. But even with all of that knowledge and all of that research, I'm always sort of like putting the trends through the litmus test of my style, right? And putting the trends to the litmus test of my life as well, because that's important. Because what happened over the years when I was just blindly following trends was I ended up with a closet full of clothes and literally nothing to wear. For example, if you're a mom who works from home, maybe has like a toddler and maybe some older kids, your day probably looks like you get your kids ready for school, you do drop off or you take them to the bus stop, you log in to Zoom, you feed your toddler, maybe during your break time, you take them to a, a play group or the park, you come back home, you pick up your kids from um, the bus stop and then you make dinner, right? If that's your life, Okay, even if your entire Pinterest board is filled with girls in bodycon dresses, in club clothing, and little skimpy little outfits, that may not make sense to wear to the playgroup, to the park, to, you know, to log into Zoom, right? So even though bodycon dresses are trending, which they are not, by the way, but this is just an ex extreme example, filling your closets up filled with bodycon dresses will not make sense because on the day to day, you will have absolutely nothing to wear. So for a mom like that, the staples for her wardrobe, I would think would be a nice blazer, a good cardigan, maybe like a, a matching sets, short matching sets since we're going into summer, but also like basics like a button down shirt in like different colors. If you like colors, if you prefer neutrals and neutral colors, easy like wide leg pants. That is what I would consider examples of staples and a nice crisp white shirt, a nice crisp tank that you can layer a blazer over, that you can throw a chunky sweater over, wide leg pants so you can run around with your kids, maybe some leggings, some athleisure looks, again, so you look put together at pick up and drop off. Those would be the essentials, right? That you would need for your wardrobe. And those would be the things to invest in rather than blindly following, you know, the body contract. Now, maybe if, you know, blue is trending or green is trending or pink is trending and that's your color, then you can go ahead and pick up that athleisure set in pink, in green, in blue. You can go ahead and grab button down shirt in a fun pastel pink or in a fun pastel green. In that way, you're still incorporating those trends, but you're filtering it through the lens of your life. 
The next rule, comfort and confidence are key. However you wanna say it, right? I realized that there was a direct correlation between how confident I felt my confidence was affected by how comfortable I felt. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Right, when I felt comfortable in what I was wearing. So if I wasn't wearing three different types of Sphinx and a tight body hon skirt or like a crop top that was too small, and my bra was showing, I had to keep on pulling it down or a skirt or a dress or a skirt that was too long, short and I had to keep pulling it up. I realized that when I was comfortable, I felt the most confident. So here's a little litmus test. If you are getting dressed in the house, and you're looking in the mirror and you are already pulling things okay adjusting like for example this dress I love it I wear it indoors but if I was gonna wear it to maybe a function I would either tack it here so it wasn't so low or I would get it pulled up in the back so it didn't drop so low again me knowing that if I walk out the door with it being super low and I'm going somewhere a little bit more formal that I will consistently pull on the top and consistently adjust and I would feel a little self-conscious about you know having so much on show here now I've learned that okay that means I'm not wearing this out to like a professional function right because I want to enter the room and feel my best so if you look in the mirror and you find yourself tugging at things tugging at the you know the waist of the pants because they're too tight or the dress because it's like hugging you in the wrong places then it's time to take that outfit off okay and wear something else with that in mind I've also learned what areas of my body make me feel the most self-conscious I've also learned the styles and the silhouettes that work best to camouflage those areas with that in mind maybe you over the course of a month you want to just take note while you're getting dressed if you put on together an outfit and really love the way you look take a picture of it and do this over the course of a month or two months look through those pictures and and identify the pattern what about this outfit made me feel great was it that it showed off my legs and I love the way my legs look was it that it showed off my arms or my shoulders or my decolletage whatever it is right identify what it is about that outfit that made you feel comfortable it could be that it skimmed over your fupa or you know the full sleeves hit your arms it's fine okay we are all human beings and we all have things about our bodies that we don't 100% love the difference is that we do not allow those areas of concern take over our entire style steal our joy in dressing I'm sure you've heard the girl you say when you look good you feel good and that's literally sums up why your confidence is tied to your comfort it don't matter what the girlies are wearing okay it doesn't matter if barrel jeans are in and you still love your skinny jeans it doesn't matter if little flippy skirts are in and you know you still love your maxi skirts like wear what you feel the most comfortable in so that you can feel the most confidence now I'm not saying don't push the envelope I'm not saying stay in a style red Sometimes you do have to push yourself out of your comfort zone, but be intentional about it. Test it out. Maybe when you are around the house or you're gonna be with friends or you're going somewhere where you don't feel like you're gonna be on show, definitely test it out. And I say this because summer's coming and we all have that habit of hiding our bodies, you know, because we're, we don't want anybody to see those areas of concern. We don't want anybody to see our cellulite. We don't want anybody to see our arms. Well, sis, it don't matter if you wear a sack or not. If you are a bigger person, if you have a bigger body, people can tell. And there is no reason why you should be uncomfortable in dealing with discomfort in the heat just because you don't want people to see your cellulite. Everybody has cellulite. Everybody has stretch marks. Everybody, and of course, I'm sure there's some women in the world that don't have cellulite and stretch marks, but those people are the extreme minority. I believe I've talked about this in another video, but trust me that no one is more focused on those areas of concern than you are. Everybody has their own business to be worrying about. We are all walking around, we are all self-absorbed, so it's okay if you wear, you know, a pair of shorts and a tank top if it's 100 degrees outside. It's okay, okay? <laughs> invest in staples I've talked about this to them blue on this channel <laughs> because I think it's so 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 important in the world of fast fashion in the world 99 cent t-shirts in the world of you know buying 10 pairs of shorts for $10 
invest in your staples and this is especially important if you want to build your capsule if you want to build a wardrobe that will stand the test of time a wardrobe that you will love what people don't seem to understand is that cheap clothing ends up being more expensive in the long run than quality staples okay if you're not interested in a wardrobe that will last you the test of time if you're not interested in looking elevated if you're not interested in a wardrobe that will last you if you're not interested in putting on clothing that makes you feel good that feels good on the body then don't invest in your basic now I want to say this because what is a basic for me and what is a basic for you might be different for example I am obsessed with my four dollar tank tops from Target I have those tank tops in every color known to man at this point I'm pretty sure I have like seven pairs of the white version of those tank tops I have several versions in black I have other colors and I have those tank tops I started buying them when they were like $4.99 they were like two for ten or something like that or two for twelve right those tank tops are a staple in my wardrobe and not expensive at all but what I love about them is that even though as many years that they have made that those tank tops every single time when I get them I wear them I wash them they always come out of the washer exactly how I put them in that is the litmus test of your basics that's what I mean by invest in your basic invest in basics that when you put them in the wash and you pull them out they're just exactly like they were when you bought them so those tank tops are under ten dollars a piece right on the flip side I have a pet peeve when it comes to white t-shirts I believe that your shirt should not pucker around the collar if it's puckering it looks cheap it looks old it looks worn no bueno I have tested and tried t-shirts from Target I've tested and tried t-shirts from H&M from all these different places and I realized after testing and trying over and over again that I just had to spend a little bit more money on my um, white t-shirts if I wanted them to wash and wear well I remember my first like expensive t-shirt was from Nordstrom and I grabbed it during the Nord Nordstrom anniversary sale the t-shirt normally retails for about $30 I was able to get it for $17 and as soon as I got that t-shirt I knew I was never gonna go back year after year anytime the sale would come up I would buy some more of those t-shirts now my current favorites are from Abercrombie they're about $24 a piece Again, some people, I heard someone say, oh, I don't like spending too much money on my t-shirts because I just want to wear them once and throw them away. Personally, that's not a route that I want to take because of, you know, the sustainability issue that we're having on our planet. With that said, that doesn't mean I'm not going to shop at a Shein or at a H&M if they have what I'm looking for. I'm not advocating for you to grow your own cotton and make your own cotton shirts. I'm just saying that investing in those quality staples one will mean that when you wash them even if they get stained or something gets on them when you invest in the better quality you're able to wash them and those stains come out better you know they handle the washing and the drying process they're less high maintenance to take care of and overall when you invest in your staples it just allows your outfit to look a little bit more elevated a little bit more crisp a little bit more luxe every single time I'm gonna take fit I'm gonna take fit over the size on the tag if you look in my wardrobe you will see that you can find size 8 and you can size find size 22 and my true size is probably an 18 right now okay the size tag is a suggestion you will find a spectrum of sizes I do not let the size on the tag keep me from having my clothes fit the way they should fit my body the truth of the matter is that brands do not have uniform sizing okay they have different fit models they cut for specific types of customers and that cut or how they're sizing their clothes may not be in line with how your body is shaped or how your body is proportioned I feel like you know the H&Ms of the world to try their best to fit on different models so they can hit like the most universally flattering cuts but there are just some times where you have to size up or you have to size down depending on the fit and the sizing of the brand one thing I learned was that a Torrid or like a Lane Bryant you cut their jeans with a lot more room in the 
belly area. Well, I happen to be one of the plus size women in minority whose belly area isn't necessarily proportionate to my hips and my butt. That's the reason why every single time when I buy pants, the seat of the pant is always too long because I actually have a short torso. So I already know this, right? And I factor this when I'm shopping. On the flip side, I have a butt and I have some hips. And I know that a lot of times, most of the times, jeans and shorts and pants are not cut for a woman with an ample shapely derriere, right? So I'm gonna have to size up and probably take those pants or those shorts to a tailor and have them add darts so it lays properly on my body. So with that in mind, I'm gonna always size up so that the pants or the shorts fit to the widest part of my hips. So when in doubt, fit is king. Okay, you always want to fit to the widest part of your body, irregardless what the size tag said. Whether you think you're 18, if it's a 24 blazer that fits better, then grab that 24 blazer. Like for someone like me, I have really thick arms, so I know I always have to size up in my blazer. But what does that mean? It means like the body and the core of the blazer is always big because I'm smaller around my core. So I know I'm gonna have to take it to the tailor and have it taken in. And I don't know where, like over the years, we've forgotten that, you know, in the olden days, people either made their clothes or they had their clothes tailored to fit. There is no one size fits all fit. With that in mind, you always want to focus on the fit and less on the size on the tag. If you've been enjoying the video so far, y'all go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to make more videos like this. And if you never wanna miss a video, all you have to do is subscribe and turn on your notifications. Remember, it's not just about the clothes we wear, but it's about how we wear them. Stick to your color palette like it's your personal brand. Don't let trends dictate your style. You dictate the trends, honey. Comfort and confidence are a non-negotiable. And invest in quality staples because quality never goes out of style. And last but not least, remember fit oversized tag every single time. And there you have it, boo. Five style principles that'll take your fashion game from zero to 100 real quick. Now I wanna hear from you. Which one of these style principles resonates with you the most. Drop a comment down below and let's keep this fabulous conversation going. Until next time, stay chic, stay fabulous, and remember, your curves are your crown.